Okay, today we're talking about the probability of multiple events. Um, we ended yesterday with talking about just simple probability, and that was talking about one event. So what we're doing today, we're going to talk about to find the probability of two events occurring together, you have to decide whether the occurrence of one event affects the occurrence of the other event. When the occurrence of one event affects the occurrence of another, then the two events are said to be dependent. Otherwise, the two events, actually that should say just dependent. Otherwise, the two events are independent. So often when you're working through probability problems, that's the first thing that you want to test. So let's look at some examples of classifying events. Are the outcomes of each trial dependent or independent events? If I roll a number cube and then I spin a spinner, does rolling a number cube affect spinning a spinner? Well, hopefully you can understand that those have nothing to do each other, with each other, and therefore these two events are independent. Pick one flashcard, then another from a stack of 30 flashcards. Okay, if I take one out, I no longer have 30 flashcards, I only have 29. So in that case, these two events are dependent. Okay, look at the last example. You select a coin at random from your pocket. You replace the coin and select again. Are your selections independent events? Well, hopefully you'll know that the key right here is actually the fact that we replace the coin. So once we replace it, then it's as if the first event never happened. So yes, the selections are independent, and basically it's because, uh, let's say, because one event, event, does not affect the occurrence of the other event. Okay, making sure that looks like the word event. Okay, a definition here. Two events that cannot happen simultaneously that means at the same time, two events that cannot happen simultaneously are said to be mutually exclusive events. Big fancy word for saying they can't happen at the same time. Okay, um, an example of mutually exclusive events. Okay, assuming a fair coin, meaning one side is head and one side is tails, what is the probability of flipping it one time and getting a head and a tail? That's impossible. It can't happen both at the same time. So those two events are mutually exclusive. Okay, so we have some more definitions with our compound events. First off, we have the probability of A and B. And the probability of A and B, A and B, is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. Okay? Now, if I the second one we're going to look at is the probability of A or B. The probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. And they do distinguish here these two definitions are basically the same. One of them, it initially states that if the two events are not mutually exclusive, then we have to subtract that out. Well, kind of as we just talked about, if they are mutually exclusive, then this thing is equal to zero. So you don't really need to worry about it and just know that if it's and, we're going to multiply, and if it's or, then we're going to add. And always remember to subtract out the AND option. Okay, so look at the example we have. 
A and B are independent and mutually exclusive. Probability of A is 3 over 5, and the probability of B is 4 over 9. They want us to tell us, want us to tell them if probability of A and B equal to 4 15 is a false statement or a true statement. So the probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B. Well, what's the probability of A? They told us it was 3 fifths. What's the probability of B? They said it was 4 ninths. So when I multiply those together, simplifying that because I'm not using my calculator, that gives me 4 fifteenths, which is the same thing that we have. So this statement is true. Okay, look at the next one. It says the probability of A or B. And the probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. The probability of A is 3 fifths. The probability of B is 4 ninths. What is the probability of A and B? We don't know except that they told us it was mutually exclusive. And if it's mutually exclusive, then that probability is zero. So that means that the probability of A or B is just the sum of those two. So that statement would be false. Okay, so now we're just gonna work lots of examples together. First off, look at problem number two. All right, at a picnic, there are 10 diet drinks and five regular drinks. There are also eight bags of fat-free chips and 12 bags of regular chips. If you grab a drink and a bag of chips without looking, what is the probability that you get a regular drink and regular chips? Okay, so we are looking for the probability of a regular drink and a regular chips. Now, are these two events mutually exclusive? No, they're not, because it's it's I can actually have them both happen at the same time, which is what we're trying to get. So that's not a problem. So that means that it's going to be the probability of a regular drink times the probability of regular chips. And the probability of a regular drink, how many drinks do we have? We have 15 types of 15 different drinks. How many of them are regular? Five. How many chips do we have? We have 20 different bags of chips. How many of them are regular? There are 12. So put that in your calculator or simplify it by hand. Five goes into 24 times. Four goes into 12 three times. Three goes into 15 five times. I'm left with one on top and five on the bottom. So my probability is one out of five or 20%, whichever you prefer. I'll go ahead and put that. You don't need to box both of them, but either answer is acceptable. Okay, look at the next one. Uh, all we're supposed to do here is determine whether or not the events are mutually exclusive. Okay, so looking at these uh, problems, you roll a standard number cube are the events mutually exclusive explained? Rolling an even number and rolling a prime number. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out if I need to find the probability of even and prime. Is it possible for those two events to happen at the same time? And the answer is yes, they can happen at the same time. Therefore, they are not mutually exclusive. <clears throat> Excuse me, and to explain that, you just need to say because 2 is even and prime. Okay, let's look at the second one. What is the probability of rolling an even number and rolling a number less than two? 
So can I roll a die which has sides 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or a number cube, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Is there an even number that is less than 2? Okay, obviously there is not, so these two events are mutually exclusive. I could just say yes. Mutually exclusive because there is no number on a number cube on a number cube that is even and less than two. And therefore, they cannot both happen at the same time. All right, last example. At your high school, oh, I lied, it's not the last example. At your high school, a student can take one foreign language each term. About 37% of the students take Spanish, about 15% of the students take French, about 9% of the students take Mandarin Chinese. What is the probability that a student chosen at random is taking Spanish, French, or Mandarin Chinese? So again, are these events mutually exclusive? And the answer is yes, because they told us that a student can only take one foreign language at a time. So um, I'm looking for the probability of Spanish or French or Chinese. And that's going to be, remember or is adding, so that's the probability of Spanish plus the probability of French plus the probability of Chinese. They were mutually exclusive, so I don't have to subtract anybody that might be taking both languages or all three languages, two or three languages. So the probability of Spanish, 37%, uh, we're going to write that as a decimal. French is 15% as a decimal, and Chinese is 9% as a decimal. So we add all those up and we get 0.61, which becomes... 61%. All right, this is the last example. We have a dish with different tokens in them, and they want us to find what is the probability of each. First off, what is the probability that when you pick one token, token, <laughs> it will be square or red? So I'm trying to find the probability that it is square or red. That means that it is the probability of it being square plus the probability of it being red. Hmm, can it be red and square? Yes. So to answer the question, are they mutually exclusive? No, they're not. So that means I have to subtract the probability of it being square and red. So the probability of square, how many tokens do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tokens. How many of the tokens are square? One, two, three. All right, again, nine tokens. How many of the tokens are red? Three. And now, how many of the tokens are red and square? That's one. So three ninths plus three ninths minus one ninth is five ninths. Okay, what about the probability of it being green or square? That's going to be, are they, is that mutually exclusive? Okay, it is not because we certainly see a green square up there. So we have probability of green plus the probability of red I'm sorry, I was looking at the last problem. Probability of green plus the probability of square minus the probability of green and square. So the probability of green, I know I have nine tokens, so I'm going to go ahead and put those nine in my denominator. How many of them are green? Three. How many of them are red? Uh, square? Uh, we have three. 
And how many of them are green squares? One. So again, we're back to five ninths. And that sums up the probability of multiple events.